This video contains the solutions to the double integrals over general regions practice problems. In this problem, we're given a region, but we're not given a function to integrate. We're just asked to set up a generic integral over that region. So this is to practice the different slicing methods that we can use to try to set up our integral without having to worry about actually evaluating the integral that we get. So we're asked to do the order of integration dy dx. And so what that means is that we want to slice this vertically. So the height of this box, that's going to be the vertical slice that we're going to get. The top of the box is on the function y equals 4x. And the bottom of the box is on the function y equals x cubed. So that means that in my generic inner integral, the dy integral, my lower bound is going to be x cubed, and my upper bound is going to be 4x. And I integrate the function f of xy with respect to y. And then my outer integral is going to go from my low x value up to my highest x value. So the lowest x value is here at the point 0, 0, and the highest x value is at the point 2, 8. So I integrate from 0 to 2, and that integral will be with respect to x. So that's my iterated integral in the order dy dx. Now if I want to slice the other direction, now I'm interested in the left end of this slice rectangle and the right end of the rectangle. So the left end is on the graph of y equals 4x, which is the same as x equals 1 fourth y. And the right end, which is the upper end in the x direction, is on the graph of y equals x cubed, which is the same as x equals the cube root of y. So in this case, my inner integral would go from 1 fourth y to the cube root of y of my generic function f of x, y. That integral would be with respect to x. And my outer integral would go from the low y value, which is 0, the low y value at your point 0, 0, up to the high y value, which in this case would be 8. And so that would be my integral with respect to y. And so this is my iterated integral set up in the two different orders of integration. So this is a similar type of problem, but this time, rather than being given a picture with functions being the bounds of our region, we're told that we have a triangle with various vertices. So let's first draw an, a diagram of this region. So we've got the points 0, 0, the point 6, 0, and the point 4, 2. And so the borders of this triangular region are functions that we should probably try to figure out the formulas for. So just using our regular method of finding um, the slope of a line and the, and the equation of a line, we can figure out that this equation is y equals 1 half x, and this line here is going to be y equals 6 minus x. And then, of course, this bottom, if we need it, is the x-axis, which is y equals 0. So if we want to slice this vertically with the order dy dx, then we're going to get two different kinds of vertical slices. We get a vertical slice with y equals 1 half x on top, and then right here at x equals 4, the slicing changes so that then I have y equals 6 minus x on top, and the x-axis on the bottom. So to set this up in the order dy dx, I'm going to need two separate intervals. I'm going to have to integrate from 0 to 4, and then integrate from 0 to 1 half x of my generic function f of x, y, dy dx, plus, for the second part of that region, my integral is going to have to go from 4 to 6, and then from 0 to 6 minus x, my function f of x, y, dy, dx. Now, if I were to slice the other direction, if I were to slice horizontally, the situation would be a little bit different. If I slice horizontally, my slices are consistent from the bottom of the region to the top of the region. The left end of this slice rectangle is on the graph of y equals 1 half x, which would be x equals 2y. And the right end of this slice rectangle would be on the graph of y equals 6 minus x, which is the same as x equals 6 minus y. So I only need one integral here. The inner integral would go from 2y to 6 minus y. And the outer integral would go from my low y value to my high y value, which would be from 0 to 2. Again, my generic function f of x, y, and this would be in the order dx dy. So if we were actually going to want to integrate a function over this region, we probably would rather do it that second way because we only have one double integral to work out. This time we're given an iterated integral. Now we need to sketch the region that this iterated integral represents, and then we need to reverse the order of integration so that we get an integral that's actually doable. If we look at this uh, integral that we have, we have a y to the fifth plus one in the denominator. We don't know how to integrate uh, a function that has that kind of denominator. It would be some kind of horrible partial fractions type of thing. 
Um, so what we're going to see, though, is that when we reverse the order of integration, it's not going to be so bad. So what's this region look like? Well, the inner integral says that my, my vertical slice goes from y equals the square root of x to y equals 2. So y equals the square root of x looks like this. And then y equals 2 is going to be a horizontal line that's going to look something like this. And these two lines, uh, these two curves meet at the point 4, 2. And then my outer integral goes from x equals 0 uh, to x equals 4. So we can tell that this region is the region that I'm looking at. That's my region R. So how do I reverse the order of integration? Well, I've got to slice the region the other way. I've got to slice it horizontally. And the left end of this horizontal slice is on the y-axis, which is x equals 0. And the right end of this horizontal slice is on the graph of y equals the square root of x, which is x equals y squared. So the integral that I get is the integral from 0 to y squared. And then the outer integral is going to be the y integral, which is going to go from the low y value, which is 0, up to the high y value, which is 2. And I'm still integrating the same function, x over y to the fifth plus 1, but now the order of integration is dx dy. So since the, the y to the fifth plus 1, that's just a constant multiple, the antiderivative is going to be 1 over y to the fifth plus 1, that constant multiple is going to stay there, multiplied by the antiderivative of x, which is 1 half x squared. And now I'm going to need to plug in 0 and plug in y squared and subtract. When I plug those things in for x, well, when I plug in the 0, I'm just going to get 0. I can pull the 1 half out of the integral, and then I'm going to get y squared squared, which is y to the fourth. So I get y to the fourth over y to the fifth plus 1. Again, I'm integrating from 0 to 2 with respect to y. Now I should hopefully be able to see that I can do a substitution, u equals y to the fifth plus 1, and then my du is just going to be 5 u to the fourth, y to the fourth, dy. So that means I need a factor of 5, and then I put a factor of 1 fifth out front. That's going to give me 1 tenth, and then my integral is going to look like 0 to the fifth plus 1 is 1, and then 2 to the fifth plus 1, that's 33, and then I'm going to have my du divided by u. That's 1 tenth times the natural log of the absolute value of u, evaluated from 33 from 1 to 33. When we plug in 1, we're going to get 0, and so we just get 1 tenth times the natural log of 33, and that's our answer to our integral. Finally, we have a situation where we have a solid that's bounded by surfaces, and we can figure this out, the volume of the solid, using a double integral simply by integrating the top function, the top surface, minus the bottom surface over the region. So they're giving us some information here of that the two surfaces are z equals y plus 1 and z equals x squared plus 1. So where do these two things intersect? Well, z equals y plus 1 and z equals x squared plus 1. If I want to know where these two surfaces cross, I can set them equal to each other. y plus 1 equals x squared plus 1. That's y equals x squared. And so I can tell that this parabola in my xy plane that I'm seeing, again, we're looking at it kind of a, on a side view, but that is y equals x squared. I'm also told that I'm bounded by the surface y equals 1. Now remember, that's a plane, and it's a plane that's parallel to the xz plane. And so this line here that I'm seeing, again, looking at it from a side angle, that's got to be the line y equals 1. And so if I were going to draw the region R in the normal view, in a top-down view, where we have our x-axis and our y-axis, that region would be bounded by the curve y equals x squared and the line y equals 1. And so if I want to set up a double integral to represent the volume here, my volume is going to be the top surface minus the bottom surface, which in this case is y plus 1 minus y squared plus 1. I can tell which one's on top just by looking at the picture. And now how do I set up integral? Well, I'm going to slice it vertically. So my top function is y equals 1. My bottom function is y equals x squared. My low x value is over here at the point minus 1 comma 1. And here I have the point 1 comma 1. So my outer integral is going to go from negative 1 to 1. And this is going to be a dy dx order of integration. Doing a little bit of simplification, we're integrating from minus 1 to 1, integrating from x squared to 1 of just y minus x squared dy dx. Now that we've got it set up, now we just have to actually do the calculus. We start by taking the antiderivative with respect to y. The antiderivative of y is 1 half y squared. The antiderivative of x squared is x squared y. 
and we're plugging in x squared and 1 in for those y's. When we plug in 1 for y, we get 1 half minus x squared, minus what we get when we plug in x squared for y, which is going to give us 1 half x to the fourth minus x to the fourth. Simplifying, we get 1 half minus x squared. In the parentheses, we have negative a half x to the fourth, so subtracting that, we get plus 1 half x to the fourth. Taking the antiderivative, we get 1 half x minus 1 third x cubed plus 1 tenth x to the fifth. And then again, we need to plug in 1 and negative 1. That's going to give us 1 half minus a third plus a tenth minus parentheses minus a half plus a third minus a tenth. This works out to be 4 fifteenths minus minus 4 fifteenths, so plus 4 fifteenths, which works out to be 8 fifteenths.